Thanks for tuning in to podcast number 17. Yep, here we go. Uh, I appreciate everybody taking the time, and I'll say that every time because uh, I know everybody has busy schedules, uh, and it does take uh, it does take a little bit to to set this up to where you you set some time aside to uh, to listen to these. So I appreciate everybody taking the time to do that, uh, and the, the people that have written in or they stop and see me at the track and talk about these. So uh, very much appreciated, and I appreciate the people. Uh, that have uh, rated the thing on, uh, I rate my podcast on iTunes. Um, I appreciate that as well. It keeps me motivated and uh, keeps, me, keeps me going uh, with this. So this podcast um, <clears throat> comes from uh, people writing in, and it was written in a couple of different ways. And so when we get into this, we'll, I'll try to address both, both of the ways that uh, people have, have asked about this. So it was asked a couple ways. So this this number seventeen here is overcoming the fear of corner speed, and basically, how do I increase my corner speed? And so we'll uh, we'll address both of those things. And uh, this is a very tough one, quite honestly, because um, it's very subjective and um, uh, it has a lot to do with uh, p- uh, people's pace and people's comfort levels as well. So this is a little bit of a tough one. So <clears throat> the first thing is let's let's really look at what corner speed is. And corner speed, corner speed um, is is really a byproduct of a good entry. And I want to say that first because people will say, "Well, gosh, I need to get my corner speed up. I need to get my roll speed up." And most of the times, that is because your entry is not as good as it should be. And when when you get to the top of the sport. When you get to that last second or second or two seconds or whatever it is of, of pace, this usually is not an issue. And it's not an issue because the entry is so good. It's when we're off the pace a little bit or, or um, uh, we're, you know, we're getting from the B group to the A group, C group to the B group, whatever it may be, that this becomes a problem. Gosh, guys are coming around me on the outside. Or all, you know, they're able to ride around me on the outside of these big, long radius corners. So I wanted to make that point uh, clear pretty uh, first, which is roll speed or corner speed is the byproduct. Have, doing it correctly or having good corner roll speed is a byproduct of a good entry. That's really where it starts from. So I wanted to make that point clear first. The second thing is <clears throat> corner speed or roll speed at the top of our game, right? At, at a high pace. There really isn't any track in America, well, there, there's a few, and I'll, I'll, name, I'll name some examples, where corner speed or roll speed actually makes a difference in your lap time. So think about that. If your entry is as good as it can be and your exit is as good as it can be, then you, you, your roll speed or entry, your corner speed is going to be good. So by actually picking the throttle up and increasing that speed, does it make a difference in your lap time at the top of the, at the, top of the game? And there's very few places where that actually happens. It might be Willow Springs, Big Willow Turn 2, it might be Chuck Walla, the Bull, and even that's questionable. Um, uh, Road America, um, the Carousel, uh, and I'm sure there's, there's, there's a couple of others, there's a few others. But we're, t- but we're talking tenths, tenths of a second. We're not talking massive, a massive amount of time. So this issue really comes back to the people that that um, are not running at that pace right they're they're just our regular guys that like like me that just want to go ride yeah I can have a good pace but you know I'm still nowhere near those lap records as well so how do we how do we overcome that fear how do we pick up that corner speed so uh, I wanted to address one um, what corner speed is about or what roll speed is all about uh, and that is again a byproduct of a good entry and also where it actually makes a difference at the top of the sport so we're pretty clear on that. We'll also have a really good report card um, to know that uh, to, to know that you're that you're doing this um, correctly. So first thing to do, we've got a couple things. <clears throat> One is if we're going to go work on this, it's just like the other podcast that I've talked about. Is if you're going to go work on this. Work on one thing at a time. Pick a specific corner. Pick a specific issue, the biggest one that's holding you back, and then go work on that. And and not be worried about your entry, not be worried about your exit. Yeah, I'm not saying overslow them or rush them or whatever. I'm just saying let's be focused on what you're trying to improve, right? That is this, that's the deliberate practice that we're talking about. If you want to go practice this, then go practice this 
specifically. So that's the first thing that I wanted to talk about. And let's identify where that's happening. And, and, and typically it's in these, these big, 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 long radius corners as well. So the first part of it is um, our fear, the fear of corner speed. And the fear of corner speed comes from typically, typically that I've seen, it comes from two things. One, we're not using our eyes and there's too much weight on your inside arm. The bike won't turn and the bike won't lean because your inside arm is so lock solid. You've locked the steering head up. The front wheel won't, the front, the front wheel won't track the radius correctly and the bike won't do anything. So you're like, oh my gosh, I'm scared. The thing won't do what I want. You bet it won't because your arm's lock solid. So the first thing is, if we have a fear of it, let's take a look at your eyes, right? Let's, can you actually see what kind of radius is it? Is it, an, is it a short radius corner? Is it a long radius corner? And then that all goes back to what we, we played about, which is, all right, where should I be letting off the brakes? So <clears throat> the fear, the fear typically comes from our eyes and weight on our inside arm. So just by working on those two things, I think you'll be very surprised at what you can accomplish. This is a good time to segue before I get into how to actually increase your corner speed. This will be a good time to segue into um, uh, looking, essentially looking at um, the different radiuses and what they have to offer. And I think that that is a point that, that people really don't take a look at. So I'll give you a great example of that as I worked with Elena Myers for years. And Elena, gosh, I mean, she's so fast, right? She's so good. If you ever get to ride with her, and I hope she rides some more, watch her get a bike off of a corner, and it's it's jaw dropping how how good she gets the bike off of a corner. Well, she would she would uh, call me or red ride. She go, oh, my entry speed sucks, my my corner speed sucks, my roll speed sucks. Well, until we developed a way for her to use the brakes correctly to be adjustable for the corner radius, well, yeah, it sucked. We worked on that. We were deliberate about her braking technique. And guess what? Yeah, it wasn't an issue anymore because she took advantage of what that entry had to offer. A short radius corner, yeah, it will still turn in with the brakes, very little neutral throttle, if any, and then drive off the corner. Well, suddenly it's not an issue. Big long radius corners because she identified them as big, big entry corners. She'd use the brakes lighter and longer because it's an entry corner. Inner roll speed and corner speed came up. So by identifying and being adjustable for the corner radius, this, this, this will almost take care of itself. The report card for this <clears throat> is how much neutral throttle do you have? Yes, some big gigantic long radius corners, you're gonna have neutral throttle. Why? Because the radius is so long. Corners though, <clears throat> that where the radius is shorter, and you, look, you can look and see how much neutral throttle you have, and that will give you a great report card to see how efficient you are with those controls. So I wanted to make that, <clears throat> that point pretty clear. <clears throat> and once you start to get into, start to get into to, um, figuring out what type of corner it is and where it should be letting off the brake, it literally will fix 80% of this problem. So again, going back to fear, the fear. The fear comes from not using our eyes and having too much weight on that inside arm. The bike doesn't want to lean. So you're afraid to lean over more. You keep trying, but the bike doesn't want to go anywhere because you've told it not to. So let's look at how do we increase our corner speed. And the first thing that we'll look at is, so what are you not good at, good at specifically with corner speed? Is it on the entry? Is it in the middle of the corner? Or is it toward the exit? That's a bigger deal than you think. So being more specific with it, just saying you're going to increase your roll speed or entry speed, but kind of where, where as well is another issue. For argument's sake, we're going to take a look and say, yeah, it's in the middle of the corner in a big, 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 long radius corner. So the first thing we're going to look at is, where am I letting off the brakes? If you're letting off the brakes at turn in, if you're letting off the brakes too early, guess what? Yeah, your roll speed or corner speed is not going to be good because you haven't maximized the radius of that corner. So we'll take a look at that. And so what can we do to, to fix that? It goes back to the other podcast that I've talked to is brakes, right? Where am I letting off the brakes and how am I using my eyes? That'll be the first thing that we look at. But now you're like, wait a minute. Uh, you know what? I just want to go faster in the middle of the corner. I just want to have more lean angle. I want to get that going. Okay, great, let's work on that. So where that comes from is, again, let's back up. We wanna pick, pick one corner to mess with that, a big long radius corner where it actually kind of makes a difference. And as you do that, 
I'm not worried about your entry. I'm not worried about your exit. I'm only worried about my task at hand. I'm not saying over slow it and piss everybody else off on the track. I'm just saying, let's put yourself in a position to work on it. And, and, and the way that that's going to work is, <clears throat> one, <clears throat> let's get our eyes into play, right? Let's get our eyes into play and be present, be in the moment, think about where you're going to execute this. Draw it out on a track map and look at it and talk yourself through that. Second thing is, as you, as you get into that corner and you release the brakes, there's a couple things that we're going to do. One, I just said it again, eyes, right? Let's be, be conscious of where we're going to go. And the next one is our body position. Our body position is such a big, big deal with this. Having weight on our feet, having our, our core engaged, having our, our feet in the right spot, and being able to relax that arm makes a massive, massive difference. I said it earlier about the fear, but it also plays with trying to increase it. If you're trying to increase your corner speed and you've got massive weight on your inside arm, you've essentially locked the steering head, the bike won't turn anymore, you're not allowing that, that, that front wheel to rotate to allow the bike to lean over more. So let's make sure that inside arm is relaxed and your body position's in a, in a good spot. I think Nick Ionach said, said it really well, which what Nick, Nick would say is, hey, if your trajectory's good and your body position's good, with modern tires, your knee's gonna touch before you lose grip. I just think that's a great way to say it. Nick does a great job with that. So think about, think about that. So as you get into these big long radius corners, great, your trajectory is good, your body position is good, you got weight on your feet, your inside's arm relaxed. There's a couple things that we can do. You can start to pick up the throttle. So let's say, for, again for argument's sake, to maintain the radius of that corner, maintain the, the arc that you want, you'll use say 15% throttle, right, to maintain it. Well now, you can pick the throttle up at say, 50, go from 15 to 17 to say 22%, pick the throttle up enough, and of course the bike's gonna wanna start to run, either stand up or run wide a little bit. You're just gonna maintain your lean angle, your corner speed will come up, maintaining the same lean angle. Actually, your lean angle may increase a little bit. So that's one way to mess with it as well. And you can see how, gosh, you know it's too much, when then your radius opens up too much, and then of course you can't get your exit as well. Or now your knee starts hitting the ground, right? Knee starts hitting the ground. One thing that I'll certainly work on to find my maximums with maximums with that is I'll get in a big long radius corner like that. I'll have my knee on the ground, and you bet I will slowly start picking up the throttle until I can't bring the bike back. Once I know I can't bring the bike back, then I know that that's too much roll speed or too much corner speed, and I've now sacrificed my exit. So that's one way to take a look at it. Another thing you can do to start to, to, to pick up the corner speed and pick up the lean angle is you can, you can counter steer a little bit. You can push on that bar a little bit. And that way, by doing that, that will add you lean angle. It's in the middle of the corner. It's okay to do right then. So if you do, you can push on that inside bar a little bit. And then, and then if you want to run the same lean angle, you'll pick the throttle up. If you want to maintain more lean angle, you can just hold the throttle at the same setting. So... <clears throat> To increase that corner speed, again, a couple things that we can do is you can roll the throttle on, and then you're going to have to have a little bit more lean angle to, to, to offset that, right, to keep your radius the same. Or what you can also mess around with is pushing on that inside bar. It'll add some more lean angle, then it's going to force you to pick up the throttle as well to maintain that same radius. So there's a couple things there um, to take a look at, and um, again, so think about what's keeping you from it. Is it because I'm overslowing my entry? Am I not thinking about the type of corner? Do I not have a left lean angle? Am I scared of grip? Um, do I have weight on my inside arm? So those are the things we need to look at and you gotta ask yourself those questions. And again, if we're overslowing, we, gotta take it, we have to take a look at our eyes and think about what kind of quarter radius it is and where am I letting off the brake? If we need, if you're not running enough lean angle, Right, then we can work on adding some lean angle as well. If you're worried about grip, where does grip, where does our fear of grip come from? Holding on that bar too tight. And realize if my knee's not on the ground, I can run more lean angle. So you can start to mess around with that as well and your, your speed will come up. Having that weight on that inside arm is a bigger deal than you think in this position. So thinking about weight on that inside peg, especially on that outside, our, our head, our mass to the inside, will help make a massive, massive uh, difference with that. Again, start looking at some of the report cards for that corner radius. 
How much neutral throttle do I have? If you have a lot of neutral throttle, then you have a lot to be gained on the entry and the, the entry, and of course, as your entry comes up, your corner roll speed will come up naturally. It has to. When that also goes on, you can start thinking about using your brakes lighter and longer. Use your brakes lighter and longer. Your entry speed and roll speed will come up, and it'll naturally have you running some more lean angle as well. So some good things to work on. This is a tough one. This is a really tough one. It's very, very subjective. But I wanted to explain it to you in a couple of different ways. Uh, and then I wanted to give you some things uh, to be able to work on for it. So there you go.